Today we're gonna to talk about five essential tips that I've learned in the past 20 years of drumming uh, that helped me stay inspired and uh, grow in the kit. Some lessons that I've neglected earlier on in my drumming and really appreciate now. And um, just wanna share some stuff that I've learned with y'all. Embrace diverse genres and get out of your comfort zone. Um, kind of cliche, but in terms of genres, um, I pride myself as an eclectic drummer, playing jazz, pop, rock, funk, metal, punk. Um, and it's got me opportunities to network with different types of musicians. Um, and then in terms of breaking out of comfort zones, playing at open mics, open jams, um, even church gigs, uh, filling in for a tribute band or anything that um, challenges you to um, kind of hustle and uh, kind of get your, your chops together for the gig. And it's, it's good exercise and uh, routine and preparation. Um, so yeah, I found that really valuable, especially within the last maybe five years. Use drumless tracks. Um, you know, 2024, we have the internet, YouTube. Now you could literally type in anything you want. Um, you could type in Metallica 1, drumless, or a Led Zeppelin song, or um, let's say you want a jazz standard. Um, take the A train, no drums. There's so many different resources and musicians and composers that are uploading, um, whether it's drumless tracks or bassless, guitar, whatever it is, um, but there's just so much out there. Um, and I've really taken advantage of that, especially with learning standards and so many different in, uh, resources on the internet to you know, customize uh, you know, what you wanna hear in that drumless track mix. Um, so just super cool. And in the description of this video, uh, I have a playlist of um, some jazz standards, some funk stuff, um, just, just some songs and some uh, standards and exercises that just kind of, um, had a lot of fun with and I could see it um, helping my playing for sure. Time over chops. Um, this has been echoed by the greats, Bernard Purdy, Jeff Picaro, to name a few. I'm just a timekeeper. I basically always thought drums are to keep time. It's, it's fun and for groove. I've never done a solo in my life. I don't think I, I, I never tried. I have this mental block about playing four bar drum solo. Because it doesn't sound right to me for a drummer to do solos and stuff. I just like playing time. This is something that took me a while to figure out within, you know, my drumming career or whatever. Um, I grew up, you know, wanting to place a fill in almost every four bars or, um, you know, where it wasn't needed or overcompensating. Um, and as I grew um, as a musician and started playing for the song itself and not for what I want to play or how I want to um, be flashy or show off or, you know, stretch my ego. Uh, that's not important. What's important is the groove and the time and the feel. And it seemed to work, especially with my fingers playing the backbeat on cross stick. All right. Oh, oh, then I discovered I got some air in my hi-hat. It really, um, it's important to focus on the groove, you know, obviously chops and fills, it's important, but <clears throat> when you're in the studio or you're, you know, um, kind of a hired gun for a touring band, um, depending on the act, you know, they want you to, you know, focus on the feel because your job as a drummer, as a timekeeper, is to keep people moving, dancing, and keep on time, keep that beat going, um, and keep it consistent. Find more enjoyable ways to practice, um, whether it's getting different kind of practice pads for rudiments or, um, unique setups or let's say you're in a sports or some kind of entertainment, you know, setting up a, a pad setup while you're watching your favorite show or movie. Um, 
that, you know, really kind of helps the, um, the monotony of being alone, practicing your rudiments. And what I find is I, um, I used to do this with a, a close friend of mine. We used to go to, you know, the riverfront park and bring our practice pads or, um, a couple summers ago, I was up in, um, the Redwoods, um, and we stayed, you know, on the coast of Northern California and, uh, we were overlooking a cliff at, at the Airbnb we're at and in the morning I would have my coffee and bring my pad overlooking, you know, the Pacific Ocean and stuff like that just to keep you, you know, coming back to the rudiments and, um, it seems less of work, even though we all know it is a lot to work. So much for checking out this video. Uh, please give me a like, um, subscribe, leave a comment. You got a tip that you want to share with me. Um, us as drummers, we're a community and we're here to share resources. So uh, talk to you guys soon.